Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we are continuing our coverage of embedded systems design. And in this video, we're going to look at basically what a computer is. And it, it's a complicated device, and so we kind of just start at a high level and try to work our way down. Uh, but the question before us is basically this, what is a computer? And so the textbook definition of what a computer is, is a collection of hardware and software that are working together to accomplish a task. And that is technically what a computer is, but it really doesn't mean much uh, when you first hear that. So let's think about um, hardware that you can essentially tell to, to execute different tasks uh, depending on some input from the outside world. And so this kind of sounds funny in, when you start thinking about it because you say, well, I'm designing hardware. It's designed to do something. How am I going to tell this hardware to do different things at different times? But let's just take a look at uh, a circuit that we do know how to build that can do that. So remember the finite state machine? Uh, let's just draw a simple finite state machine. We're going to draw a state diagram. And let's say that we have some, some bubble here that represents a, uh, a state. <clears throat> and maybe we come down and we do something where we go to another state and, and I won't really name these right now. But then imagine that uh, you have different paths through this state machine uh, that, that basically do different things. Okay? So let's just say that we had three different paths and who knows what they do. You know, they're going to do this and whatever. Uh, and then maybe they return to start. Uh, and let's say this one just does that. And this one, same thing, does something like this. And so you have this finite state machine, and depending on input that you get from the outside world, you will take a different path through the state machine. And what if we design this so that each path uh, basically accomplished some different type of operation? So let's say that this was uh, operation one, and, and this path represented operation, I don't know, two, and this was operation. So you have these different operations that this finite state machine can do, and who knows what they are. I mean, they can be something very simple, like maybe this operation moves information from one register to another register. Maybe this operation uh, tells us an adder circuit to compute the sum. Maybe this operation uh, complements some bits that are in the register. So very simple operations. And so what is needed is some sort of input that sits right here uh, that would tell the finite state machine which path to go down, which operation to go down. So what if we provided uh, the state machine something, and why don't we call it like an operation code? <laughs> so an operation code, and that's just going to signify whether you go this path, this path, or this path. And this is absolutely hardware, right? I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. We know how to build this. If I gave you this finite state machine, you know, this FSM state diagram, you could go and you could synthesize this. You'd put it in a table form, a state transition table, and then you would go in and you would uh, assign state codes, and then you would basically synthesize the state memory, the next state logic, and the output logic, and you could absolutely build this. And the operation code is provided as an input right here, and life is good, okay? So this is hardware that you can tell to do different operations based upon some uh, input that you provided in the form of a code. So now you sit there and you go, well, that's kind of interesting. Uh, if this thing continued to run, we could conceptual or we could potentially uh, have different operation codes be fed into this at different times. And in fact, what if we were able to, uh, instead of having like an operation code come from, let's say a, a switch, which you could certainly do, uh, what if we, as this thing cycled through, what if we took all these operation codes and we put them in some sort of storage device? Okay, so you basically had like op, uh, operation is such a long word. Why don't, we, why don't we abbreviate that and call it like op code, you know, and we'll say op code one. And that represents an input over here that would tell this final state machine to go down this path. And then maybe, maybe we have like we wanted to do op code one again. I mean, why not? And then maybe we want to do op code uh three, let's say, and then, then uh, you got to do opcode one again, maybe. I don't even know. So depending on what we're trying to accomplish, if we could somehow put this sequence of opcodes in some storage device, then what we could actually do is we could build a, build a part of the finite state machine. Maybe there's a part, there's parts up here 
they go out and actually retrieve the opcode. So we go out here and we bring the opcode in there and then we transition through one of these, these paths. And then maybe we come down here and grab this opcode and then it tells it to go down this path again. And then we come down here and we do this, this path right here. And you could, you could visualize a system where you could, if you could just insert these, these codes, these opcodes that correspond to operations that this finite state machine can actually execute, we could build up uh, some functionality. And so these right here, each one of these paths right here can be very simple, but what we are gonna do is if we execute them in a particular order and we, we execute them over and over, we could actually build up something that would look like a very functional system. And so this is kind of a general concept of what a computer looks like. You are going to have hardware in the form of, think about it, it's a, you know, the base element is gonna be some finite state machine that has different paths through it. And these actually uh, perform different operations. And then you're gonna have some, basically these opcodes that are fed into here, but these opcodes, what we'll call them is we'll call them instructions, okay? And these instructions are going to tell the finite state machine which path to go through. And then what we do is we just put these instructions in some memory device where we execute them one by one. And each time you execute, it represents a different path through this finite state machine. And then we can, we're obviously gonna have to figure out ways to like retrieve the opcodes out of here uh, and tell the finite state machine which path, which path to go down. We're gonna have to figure out how to go through this incrementally and you know you can't do it forever so you're gonna have to have a situation where you jump back here and this is now going to be essentially a piece of hardware that you can program to do certain things so this over here now you think about this it's like well what are these codes this is memory right so you're going to store ones and zeros in here and you could actually change this so you could load in one set of op codes and that would perform some tasks uh and then you could you could put in other opcodes and it would perform a dub, another task. And this is just basically ones and zeros that sit in memory. And so what this, what these represent over here is this is gonna be the software, okay? So that's the software, which is basically the sequence of instructions that the hardware is going to execute, okay? All right, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so then we have this opcode, which is basically the binary code that is going, which is going to, be read in by the state machine. And then what we do is when we build up the computer, we actually define all the different paths that we're gonna go through. And each one of these paths becomes the number of, or it becomes a unique instruction that this finite state machine can execute. And so what happens is that we build the hardware and then we leave it, okay? it's We don't add hardware on the fly. We design this up front and the number of instructions that the state machine can execute is actually called the instruction set, okay? And maybe you've heard of instruction sets, but every kind of computer has a instruction set which represents the number and specific instructions that it can actually execute. Okay, so now we're kind of building up a, a we're building up a understanding of potentially what a computer looks like. We already talked about how the software is put right down here. And this software, this set of opcodes, and, and there's probably other information we need to add into here. The person that does this, the person that decides what order of, op, of instructions or opcodes to execute and how to repeat them and how to loop through them, that is gonna be called the software developer or the programmer, this is the coder. So you think about this, the coder comes along and they know the, the hardware that exists. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna say, okay, give me that instruction set. Here's what this thing can do. And it's very simple. They're actually really simple uh, instructions or tasks that each one of these do. And you are going to put a sequence of these together in some program memory and tell it to execute in this particular order and to repeat these. And you're even gonna to get to situations where maybe you jump over a particular instruction if, you, if another uh, situation exists. And you're gonna be able to build up basically an algorithm that uses this hardware to perform a task. And so this now becomes your software or also called your program. <laughs> and now you're starting to see the development of the computer system. Hardware is going to be now, obviously the finite state machine, right? So obviously we, we need this finite state machine, but think about this, this memory device over here is also hardware, okay? So that storage, that is absolutely hardware. 
And you're also going to have other things that you might want to do. For example, you know, a finite state machine just basically transitions through different states based upon inputs, and at each state it produces an output. But in a computer, we might want some other hardware, such as what if we wanted like uh, something that did like an add. Okay, so that is not in a finite state machine and that is not in memory, but maybe we wanted a circuit that we could do some addition. That addition right there, that would be a different piece of physical hardware that sits in there. Maybe we need some storage. Okay, maybe we need some storage in there. So maybe we need like registers. Maybe I shouldn't draw it over there. Maybe we need like registers that sit in here and these are gonna be fast storage. And maybe we need some other memory to hold uh, different things. And maybe we need some I.O. circuitry, maybe a serial interface. And so you start adding all these things together, and that becomes the computer hardware. So it's the physical components, but they don't know how to do anything. They are designed to do specific instructions, but it's only when the software is then put in there, is put in kind of this program memory in a specific order, that you tell that you exercise the hardware and get it to do something meaningful. So that's kind of the start of the concept of a computer. And we'll continue to dive uh, deep back deep into this to build an uh, even, uh, even greater understanding of what's actually going on. Okay, so we'll wrap up with that. Uh, as always, remember to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on all the latest videos. Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and now we're going to continue our coverage of embedded systems design by start talking about bleh.